Let's do a full-scale analysis, including our first derivative analysis and second derivative analysis of g of x. So for our first derivative analysis, we first have to find the critical points. To find the critical points, we're going to set g prime equal to zero, or see where g prime does not exist. So g prime is 3x squared plus 6x minus 9. This always exists. So let's set it equal to zero. We can factor out a three. We're left with x squared plus two x minus three. We can further factor this as x plus three, x minus one, which means that we have critical points at x equals negative three and at x equals one. Now, let's do our first derivative line analysis using these critical points. So here's g prime, here's negative 3, here's positive 1. Let's look to the left of negative 3. Let's say negative 5. Positive, negative, negative is going to give us a positive number. How about between negative 3 and positive 1? Let's say 0. Positive, positive, negative and to the right of positive 1, positive, positive, and positive. Which means that we have a relative max at x equals negative 3 because g prime is changing from positive to negative. And we have a relative min at x equals 1 because g prime is changing from negative to positive. Now, we Furthermore, we can say that g is increasing on the interval from negative infinity to negative 3, union 1 to infinity, because g prime is positive in these intervals. And of course, g increases when g prime is positive. And g is decreasing on the interval from negative 3 to positive 1. We can find our relative extrema. We have a relative max at x equals negative 3. And if we plug negative 3 back into g, Let's see here, we've got negative 3 cubed is negative 27. Negative 3 squared is 9 times 3 is positive 27. Negative 9 times negative 3 is positive 27 and then plus 7 gives us 34. So g of negative 3 is 34. This is the relative max of g. Let's find our relative min. This occurs at x equals 1 and if we plug 1 into g let's see what happens we have 1 plus 3 is 4 minus 9 is negative 5 plus 7 is 2 so g of 1 is 2 and this is our first derivative analysis let's now continue with our second derivative analysis to first perform our second derivative analysis, we first need a second derivative. Now our first derivative was 3x squared plus 6x minus 9. So let's take the derivative of that. g double prime of x is equal to 6x plus 6. This always exists, so let's set it equal to 0. That means that 6x is equal to negative 6, and x is equal to negative 1. Now this is a possible inflection point, but to determine whether it actually is an inflection point, we need to do our second derivative line analysis. So here's g double prime, and here's negative 1. Let's plug in a number to the left of negative 1 into g double prime. Let's say how about negative 5. 6 times negative 5 is negative 30, plus 6 is going to be even more negative. And let's see, let's check something to the right of negative 1. How about 0? 0 plus 6, that is positive. So we do indeed 
have an inflection point at x equals negative 1. Furthermore, we know that g is concave up on the interval from negative 1 to infinity because that's where g double prime is positive and g is concave down on the interval from negative infinity to negative 1 because that's where g double prime is negative. Now of course I have graphed this equation using Wolfram Alpha and if you look closely let's check it, take a look at our first derivative analysis. G is increasing from negative infinity to negative 3 and it looks like at negative 3 we say that we have a max indeed there is a max at negative 3 and of course G is increasing up until negative 3 then from negative 3 to 1 G prime is negative which means that G is decreasing so here's one right here and of course G is decreasing in that region of course at negative 1 I mean a positive 1 G has a min and here's our min right here and to the right of 1 G prime is positive which means that G is increasing now we found that the relative max occurs at negative 3 and is 34 and that looks right and the relative min occurs at x equals 1 and that's 2 and that also looks right now let's take a look at our second derivative analysis our second derivative analysis told us that g is concave down from negative infinity to negative 1 well negative 1 is right here so from negative infinity to negative 1 g is concave down and then from negative 1 to infinity g is concave up and of course negative 1 is our inflection point because that is where the concavity of g is changing and that is our full scale analysis right there